So in this video, I want to share with everyone an article from the magazine Der Stern from an issue that was published in 1958. Um, this article is called Marriage with the Devil, the article that I'm about to share with you guys. And it talks about the marriage of former Buchenwald concentration camp guard Gerhard Martin Zomer to a nurse named Barbara Ulrich. Um, the article contains some really, really good pictures of Zommer's wife as well as of Zommer himself, you know, and it really is a shame that these pictures never made it into any, you know, books or literary media that discuss Zommer or his trial or that, you know, they're not made more readily available. So, you know, the only way that a person would, who wanted to view these pictures had to view them um, would be to kind of get a copy of the magazine or get access to the magazine in some way. And so, you know, that's kind of what I'm trying to remedy here um, in this video. So what I'll do is I will show the article and the pictures. And for those of you who, you know, aren't German speakers and, you know, can't just read the contents of the article off the screen, um, I will be translating and kind of discussing the content of the article in more detail, um, both here on YouTube and on my Tumblr page when I get around to discussing the life of Gerhard Martin Sommer. So, um, with that being said, here we go. Um, Der Stern, um, volume 26, June 28th, 1958. So, we have the article. The title is Marriage with the Devil, the story of the woman who married the hangman of Buchenwald in 1956. So, we see here this is... This is Barbara Zommer, or Barbara Ulrich. Um, she is 26, or she was 26. Um, at the time of the, the, at the time that this article was written, so in 1958, she was 26, which leads me to another important point about, um, about her, um, about her, you know, um, information about her age. So, um, in many sort, in, you know, majority of the sources that talk about her, um, all say that she was 21 when she and Sommer got married, you know, uh, Der Spiegel, uh, the German newspaper, a uh, popular German newspaper of the time also published, um, an article talking about Sommer, uh, that said that he married a 21 year old, um, nurse and many other, many other books that were written at that time also said that, he, that she was, um, that she was 21. So that would, uh, you know, given the information here uh, that says that she is, in fact, 26 year old Barbara Zomer, um, that that would mean that she was, in fact, not 21, but 24 when she married Zomer in 1956. So that was just something that I found um, kind of intriguing as I was kind of making this research. And so I thought I would just kind of point that out. So again, this is Barbara Zomer. Um, now this next picture here is of Zomer himself. This one was uh, taken in 1938. Um, at the time, Zomer had the rank of Rottenfuhrer, as we can see on his collar patch. Um, he also has the uh, honor chevron for the old guard, which was on his sleeve, which was a chef, like a, a special award that members of the SS who had joined the NSDAP or any other party organization before 1933. Um, so anyone who had joined before 1933 and who was in the SS was entitled to wear this award. And Zomer had joined in 1931, in fact, when he was um, 16. So that's why he, um, that's why he has that, that award there. So let's turn the page here. Put this down. This is another picture of Barbara Ulrich. Um, over here in the caption, it says, you know, what would drive this, you know, what, 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 what would drive this woman to, you know, to, to, to marry Zummer, you know, is it, you know, can it really be love or is it just, you know, a, like a, like a victim complex sort of thing that she, that, you know, mentality that she has that caused her to marry him, you know, and it says, um, 
from from many sides uh barbara ulrich was warned not to marry you know was warned about marrying the hangman of buchenwald you know according to her um the interests that they shared or the interests that they had in common were flowers horses um music like you know uh, vinyls music records and uh books and it says that you know to this day she still cannot believe that her husband is um is you know is is capable of committing the crimes that he uh, has been accused of. So this is that picture again of Barbara Ulrich. Um, this next picture down here. Let's turn this around. Is a picture of Zommer in court. Um, this picture up top here is survive a picture of survivors of the concentration camp involved um this next picture over here the picture next to barbara zomer's one is a picture of zomer himself in court um he's being spoken to by his doctor and this man right here the one behind him is apparently um the one uh, so someone who was appointed to kind of wheel him uh, kind of to and fro the um the the ambulance and take him in and out of the courtroom so you know even on even in pictures that you know that can be found you know on google images of zomer in the court um he uh this this man uh is constantly just there uh pushing the wheelchair you know standing next to it um as the court proceedings went on so that kind of led me to believe that he was just someone who like a fixed employee who kind of um did that so that was just another interesting discovery that i made but that is the that is the picture there um down here we have a picture of the model, the cardboard model. So not the actual thing, but a cardboard model of the whipping block that was used as a punishment for prisoners in Buchenwald. Um, and Sommer, it is said that Sommer built this model um, while he was awaiting his, uh, while he was kind of awaiting his trial um, in the prison so that he could show the jury how you know so that he could so that he could show the jury you know how the um the whipping block worked and um it was said that zomer was a master of this of this punishment um what he did was he would purposely strike the prisoners in places on their backs like really high up on their backs where their kidneys were and that would cause their kidneys to rupture and they would die, you know, a painful and horrible death. Um, it was also said by one of the prisoner witnesses later on that, you know, Summer struck with exceptional force. Like, you know, five blows from him was worse than ten, um, than ten from any, from, from, than ten blows from, you know, any other SS man. Um, so that was just that whipping block model that he made. This last picture here is a picture of the um, the uh, the special administration cells uh, or the bunker, and this was where um, you can here you can see the gate, the main gate of the Buchenwald concentration camp, um, and this would and this would kind of over here be the on the left side there would this would be the um, the special detention cells and this was where Zommer worked this was where he from 1938 to 1943 this was where he committed all those all the you know um atrocities <clears throat> and this was where you know he this was his main place of operation from 1938 to 1943 so that is um just overall that second page that second page there of the of the article so now it says that uh, it's continued on page 52. So let's find page 52. There we go. Yeah. So 
So this is the continuation of the article on uh, marriage with the devil. This is a picture of Sommer and his wife. Um, I am not able to kind of guess exactly when it was taken. Um, and the caption, it says, you know, both of them had no, um, no uh, inner relationships with other people. Uh, Barbara Ulrich was a self-confessed loner. Um, and people were in for summer, you know, people were um, were kind of afraid of his, you know, were afraid of his sadistic, you know, tendencies, his sadistic, you know, aggressive nature. And he for his, you know, um, for his deeds, he really didn't have any remorse. He just had excuses and he just had, you know, explanations and just um he just had more to say about them he never really showed any remorse for what he did he never really showed that he felt you know particularly bad about uh having done what he did in um in the concentration camp so that is uh so that is that picture uh this next picture over here the last one is um a uh, picture of, I believe, um, a, the Christmas party in 1955, where that um, where Barbara Ulrich and Martin Zommer met one another. So, in this article, she does talk about how she met him. Uh, so, what happened was she was invited to a Christmas party that was thrown in the um, in the hospital where she worked by her by her friend um, Irmgard, and so when she um, and when she kind of came there, she met this she met this man who was lying on a bed, and that was Gerhard Zommer. And you know, he was at the time he was playing. He was playing this really nice. He was playing these songs or this music that she really liked because she always really liked, um, you know, vinyls and whatnot and music records. So uh, he told her, you know. Um, That, that he told her that basically she should come sit next to him and because of that that was sort of the happiest day of her life and you know she and De Gerhard Zommer had made a very big impression on her and that you know she she sat next to him and he began to talk about his his you know his past his youth his you know his life on his parents farm he talked about his horses and you know He gave, you know, he, um, he, he gave, he gave the impression that he was a very, like, he was very kind of like, a, I guess you could say a persecuted person, you know, um, it took, let's, she, she basically said that it took her a while, he, it took him a while for him to trust her, uh, because, you know, he kind of, he kind of made the impression that he was someone who, you know, was always on the lookout and things like that. And he always just had to be careful of, you know, who he kind of interacted with and whatnot. And when she came to visit him in the, uh, in the first months of 1956, you know, she was very impressed by his, you know, great love for animals. And what he would do is he would always, in the winter, he would always put on his windowsill, um, food for, for, you know, the birds. And they had, um, they, they, they had, they had many shared interests and she was really happy because, you know, she had finally found, you know, she was always a loner, someone who was always alone and she had always, and she finally had found someone who was like her and she finally found herself a partner. And one time he said to her, you know, she should, you know, she should, that she should forget about him. She should separate herself from him because, you know, he, he, he won't bring her any happiness but you know she couldn't bring herself to do that and he was you know she told she always she said that you know he was the the best husband that she could ever have and four four days after her um her 25th birthday on July 9th 1957 um Sommer was arrested and she basically ran after the ambulance until she you know until she could no longer do so so that was kind of the, um, that was kind of the, uh, 
the story of how she kind of ended up meeting Zamer. Um, it is also mentioned that her parents, uh, you know, urged her to separate herself from this person. Her colleagues all, you know, um, her colleagues, you know, said, uh, don't, you know, don't, don't marry this guy, you know, don't just stay away from him. But, you know, obviously she would, she didn't really listen to anyone. Um, one thing that I think was obviously was, was very clear was that, you know, she, um, she did not believe or she was firmly, you know, of the belief that her husband simply did not commit these crimes, you know. Uh, so it says over here that there was a um, kind of like a conversation with um, with Barbara Zamer and it said, you know, have you, um, you know, did you, did you marry Zamer, you know, out of the urge of, you know, um, of victimizing yourself, of like playing the victim, of, you know, feeling uh, victimized. And she said, no, you know, that, that that's nonsense. And she said, you know, do you know, or she said that, you know, she said that, you know, do you believe that you will see your husband again after all this is, um, after all this is over, you know, like, do you believe that he will be, um, kind of proved innocent of all these accusations? She said, you know, of course, you know, my husband and I do not fear the process. And she said, and they asked her, you know, are you aware of, um, are, are you aware of, of the, the things that your husband, um, th that your husband has done? And she said, you know, he only did that, you know, he, he, he didn't do, he didn't do anything other than what he was made to do. Um, he never killed anyone. He never, you know, murdered anyone. Um, he just, all he did was just administer the punishment on the, uh, on the whipping block and that was, and he also helped um, the the camp doctors um, perform injections, uh, perform fatal injections um, to to execute people. But he only did that because otherwise he himself would have been executed. So you know, from that, it's obviously very clear that you know that she does in fact, uh, also have that belief that, you know, he, he, he didn't kill anyone, he didn't murder anyone, it was just, it was just, you know, um, it was just things that he was, um, commanded to do. So, um, the last question is, you know, do you, you know, you know, do you, do you, do you criticize, um, your, do you criticize your marriage with, 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 with Sommer. And she said, you know, why, you know, you know, you know, why should, you know, why should I, I criticize it? Um, so basically that was, you know, that was, that was also, um, that was also, uh, that was basically her belief that, you know, that her husband really, really didn't, her, her husband really, really didn't, um, kill anyone or her husband didn't do anything bad or that he just did what he was commanded to do and that you know the process or you know the trial would be um the trial would be you know um finished and he would be acquitted of everything that he had done and that was that but you know as the you know the the, the evidence and the witnesses and everything in the trial as that showed that wasn't the case, uh, that was anything but the case, in fact, and, you know, as a result of that, um, Sommer was arrested and he was, um, charged with, you know, life in prison and that was, you know, that was the end of that. Um, so one more thing that I did want to mention about this article is that on the evening of the trial, uh, Barbara Ozomer, um said, you know, if if this if he had really done all of these all of these um, all of these you know atrocities, then I would not have made him the the father of of my child. So you know they they did um, they did have a daughter together. Barbara uh, Ulrich and Martin Zomer did have a child together, and so that was her you know reasoning that you know. 
she she firmly believed that he did not um, do these things. So that is uh, the first. That is the this. That is the article on marriage with the devil in um, Der Stern. Um, I hope that you know by by sharing these images and by you know sharing this article. I really hope that to you know to anyone who is researching this individual, uh, Gerhard Martin Zammer, researching his life, researching you know the things he did. If anyone is you know interested in finding out more on him, I hope that this you know that this video and that this um, showing this article and these pictures was really able to help. Um, as always, I would really appreciate any, you know, questions or any, you know, if anyone has any questions or if anyone just kind of wants to discuss more about this topic or has any additional information to share with me regarding this topic, um, I would really, um, really appreciate um, if you, uh, I would really appreciate if you could just kind of let me know about that. Um, but otherwise, uh, that is, that is basically that.